With the eighth overall pick of the first round of the 1979 draft, the St. Louis Cardinals would select Otis Jerome Anderson, an All-American running back out of the University of Miami. Miami wasn't on the map, and nobody knew about my ability. And I wanted to prove to everybody that me being number one, when there were more players who had better, better stats than me from bigger schools, I knew of them, but they knew of me. So I wanted the whole world to know that Miami had a good program and that I was just as good as everybody else. OJ would have an amazing debut season with the Cardinals, rushing for over 1,600 yards, and his phenomenal performance earned him a Pro Bowl selection, along with the Rookie of the Year honors in 1979. You're a top running back in the NFL. Um, the Giants and the Cardinals are in the same division at the time, so you get a chance to play against this team. What were your thoughts when you used to have to play against the Giant defense? Well, I was always aware of where Harry Carson was. He was the nucleus of that defense, and everything we did was predicated on how Harry lined up. So we geared plays to start toward Harry front side and gave him the ability to cut back. So it, it, was, just, it was just a great match for me. And it was always intimidating to play the Jazz because they was one of the most physical teams during that era. And I didn't like getting hit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so listen, the Cardinals aren't having success. Did you have any inkling in 86 that you were going to get traded to the Giants of all places? Never in my blue moon would you think that you would trade a running back that had played in the same division to your opponent. We had just played them. and. Walking off the field, Jim Burton, who played with me at Miami, comes over and says, how would you like to be a Giant? And I say to Jim Burton, you know, I call him Virgil. Virgil, me, traded to the Giants, same division. That's not going to happen. He said, what if? I said, look, Virgil, if the Giants is willing to bring me here, I'll be more than happy to play for him. I think I would love to. I said, but it's not going to happen. A franchise. You can't trade your franchise away. That's what I thought. And after St. Louis lost to drop to 0-5 in 1986, O.J. would be excused from Cardinals practice to answer a phone call, and he couldn't believe his ears when he received the news that he was joining Big Blue. The phone rang and Bill Parcells was on the ball. And I answered the phone and said, hello, and he said, hey kid, this is Coach Parcells. And I thought it was a joke, I'm like, yeah, I can't go to the phone, you know, hey, I'll be all calling me. Guy's a good joke, I'm telling everybody, it's a great joke, guys, you good, got guys playing around. He called back and, you know, it was Bill. And he said, welcome to the Giants. He said, can you get here today? I said, no, probably tomorrow. He said, okay, first thing tomorrow, we got everything set up for you and we're looking forward to, to seeing you uh, the next day. Now, the Giants have Joe Morris, who's coming off a great year in 85, and he's having another good year in 86. When the excitement of knowing that you're coming to the Giants wears off, do you say to yourself and do you ask Parcells, what am I supposed to do? When, when Bill brought me in, one thing he said to me, he said, look, you know, we got a pretty fine running back here. We just want to do some things differently. Our fullback position is not as productive as we want. I'm looking for you to do a little fullback work. Or you have a problem with that? I said, no, Bill. I said, whatever. I said, I don't want to mess up the chemistry here. I just want to be a part of the solution. And that was my whole mindset was to be Joe backup. And whatever Joe couldn't do, they needed me to try to do it. I felt I, was, I could do it. I didn't feel that I was too far over the hill to not be productive here. I was only 28 years old. And I felt I had a lot of football still left in me. As the season goes on, the team's getting better and better offensively, and it catches up to the defense because the offense earlier in the year, it started off a little slow. Right. At what point did you get a sense that this team, if they don't get in their own way, we're winning a championship? It was just amazing to see how that whole package came together, how the team started winning and how guys just gel. And I was just totally taken back from that whole chemistry thing because, I mean, I was good with my teammates in St. Louis, but nothing ever happened good for me in that manner, meaning being on a, on a team where that everybody around you were good and everybody around you knew how to win. Tell me about uh, the Super Bowl experience. What was that like considering where you were to start the year? You had been hurt the year before. Cardinals are a team that goes nowhere fast. Now you're playing in the actual well, game. I, I always wish that I could. And there I was, there, and kind of pitching myself to see is this really real. I mean, I'm actually in the Super Bowl and I have a chance to win it more than anything else. And to OJ's surprise, Coach Parcells would reward his diligence with an opportunity late in the game. I never thought I would get a chance to play 
just being with those guys and being in the huddle. And when I had a chance to go on the field, they all looked at me and said, hey, man, we're going to get you in. Don't, you know, just, just come on. So I was very happy. There goes Otis Anderson. He's got a touchdown. Here's Parcells payback to OJ for being patient. Otis was a really good teammate, got along with everybody. And I think when he came to the Giants, he appreciated his career even more. The Super Bowl champions are the Giants. Everybody's dream in football. That one time you'll be there. All right, so the Giants win the Super Bowl. You are one of the elite backs in the NFL before you come to the Giants. As 88 unfolds, are you saying to yourself, all right, that was great, and I got my ring, but I want to play. I did, and, and strange things happened. 88, uh, during the offseason, we have offseason workout program. Parcells told me I don't have to come to offseason workout program. When he made that comment to me, I knew that I probably wasn't going to be on the team. So I made it my business to stay up here anyway. Johnny Parker went to build the second part of that workout program and said, hey, OJ been here every day. He's been working hard. You know, I think we ought to encourage him to stay here. He said, you know, he didn't have to come here, but he showed up from the first day. So my mindset was, if I could just get a chance, you know, to play. And what got me over was Ron Hart and I believe Ray Han and Johnny Parker. They went to bet for me because I was productive in, in scout team. And I was, I was working hard because I wanted to play. And they gave me a chance on short yardage to try to get, you know, first down. And I started doing it pretty well. And Ron said, hey, you know, let's try it by the goal line. And that happened. And that's where I kind of made my niche. So that gave me an opportunity to, to make the team, stay on the team, and, you know, see what happens in the future. All right. So 88 ends with a huge disappointment against mm -hmm. the Jets. That's right. Um, you don't make the playoffs at 10 and 6. Mm -hmm. And then 89 comes, and now you get a chance. That had to make you feel good that season. It, it did. It made me understand that the work that I put in in 88 gave me a chance to be a part of 89. And, you know, for some reason, you know, God blessed me with another opportunity. Unfortunately, Joe broke his foot, and Bill had two rookies at the time. I think it was Dave Maggot and Lewis Tillman. But he felt that out of all the guys going into 89 season that could give him a good chance to win was me. And he come over and he said, how much gas you got in the tank? You know, it's going to be a long season. I'm going I'm, I'm to ride you. Can you give me something? You know, and I said, Bill, I can do this. I'm going to go with the regular people. All right, you want OJ or Tillman? Who's your back? Who's your Let's run? go with OJ. All right, OJ. And Coach Parcells would not regret his decision. The age inspired OJ became the Giants warhorse rushing for over 1,000 yards and 14 touchdowns. He would be awarded Comeback Player of the Year in 1989 for his outstanding performance. Sam to Anderson across the five toward the goal line. He's close. He's across the line. Touchdown. Never say die. He knows what his role is. He's the lead horse right now. And uh, and so he's got to, you know, get in front of the wagon and pull it. I want load right, 62-10. I'm 62-10. Split backs for the Giants. Fast handoff to Anderson. Anderson gets through the line this time. Across the 30, 25, 20. He'll go down to the 10. He's at the five. He'll score. Hey, Each Sunday that I perform, I'm beating the odds. You know, whenever I finish the game, I'm beating the odds. Win, lose, or draw, I'm beating the odds because I'm counting out. I'm not supposed to be able to do this. They go to the right. Here comes Anderson. He will score. No question about that one. I'm going in, and you're not going to stop me. O.J. was back, and his power running game helped the Giants finish atop the NFC East in 1989 with a record of 12 and 4. But any hopes of a Super Bowl run would be quickly dashed as Flipper Anderson and the Rams shocked them in the divisional playoff game at Giants Stadium. I, I think we felt that we were robbed. We felt that the work that we put in surely gave us an opportunity to have been in Miami during that, that, that Super Bowl. I made a prediction coming out of college saying that if I played in the Super Bowl, state of Florida, feature running back, I'll win most MVP, right? That Super Bowl in 89 was in Joe Robbie Stadium, state of Florida, right up the street from home. I was the feature running back. Dream was there. We lose the game, coming to the locker room, tears in my eyes, 
You know, and I'm talking to Maurice, and I said, Maurice, you know, I predicted this a long time ago, if this is this would happen. And he said, well, you know, the Super Bowl next year is in Tampa. I said, are you for real? He said, yes. I said, we're going to go, we're going to win it. All right, so 1990 comes, and the Giants draft Rodney Hampton. Now, you're at a different stage in your career, though. So do you kind of understand where they're going here? Because you know that you don't have five, six years left, that you're kind of near the end. Did you sort of cherish that role as mentor, or were you pissed that you were going back on the bench? I was pissed that I'm going back on the bench. I mean, I worked so hard to get off the bench, and I knew when you draft a guy number one, he has the ability, and that means that you're going to be on the bench eventually, as soon as he was ready. So I was kind of hurt a little bit, but then I said, you know what? I could help him be the best he could be. So I took the mentoring role. I call that uncle, daddy, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> he just taught me the little things, you know, how to get prepared for the game and stay warm, stay loose. So OJ meant a lot to me. With Otis and Rodney sharing the backfield duties, the Giants would storm out to a record of 10-0 in 1990. Phil Simms would go down with an injury in week 15 and backup Jeff Hostetler stepped in at quarterback for the remainder of the season. Rodney Hampton had taken over as the Giants starting running back, but in the NFC Divisional Playoff game at home, OJ would be surprised to once again have his number called by Coach Parcells. I go back and I think about the mistake I made when I put on the wrong pants. Everybody talk about my pants. I put on the wrong pants, I had to practice pants on, and when I realized I got taped up and I knew Hampton was gonna be the starter, and I knew I weren't gonna play, so it didn't matter about what I had on. So I'm sitting back, going, you know, piece of cake. Rodney get hurt, he comes over and he tell me first. He said, something wrong with my leg. I'm like, what do you mean something wrong with your leg? He said, you know, my shin is, you know, it's bothering me. He said, it hurts real bad. And then I hear him say, you know, Rodney broke his, his shin bone. He got broken. I'm like, what do you mean he broke his leg? He said, yeah, his leg is broke. So Ray tells Bill right away, Rodney is out. Bill says, give me OJ. I'm going, what? Me? I got on the wrong pay. That's what they came to my mind. I'm not dressed right. I'm getting ready to go into a Chicago Bear game where, where we need to win. I said, holy jeepers. I said, well, let's go. So I go out there in the first play. I think I get by eight or nine yards. And now the adrenaline is flowing. I'm back in the floor of the game. I'm feeling good. I feel like I can do this now. You know, Haas was out there. We were old stable mates because we was on the second team. So we like buddy buddies, man. And we like, hey, let's go do this. With O.J. and Hostetler leading the way, the Giants would dominate the Bears, beating them 31-3 and advancing to the NFC Championship game. They said the Giants were dead. Hey, they, they said the Giants were dead. Hey, I don't understand them. They myself. stuck a fork in us and said we were done. Hey, San Francisco, they're back. We're back. They're back. <laughs> and the superstitious Coach Parcells would have a clear message for O.J. Bill called me to the front of the plane. He said, do I have to tell you? I said, what do you mean? He said, do I have to tell you? I said, what? He said, you freaking you better wear those pants. <laughs> <laughs> As fate would have it, in San Francisco, OJ and the Giants found themselves once again on the doorstep to the Super Bowl. I told Mark Ingman when we lined up for the field goal, I said, don't worry about it, man. It's destiny. It's my destiny. It's going to happen. We're going to make this field goal, and we're going to Tampa. Giants are trailing by a point. All depends on Matt Barr. Fans are on their feet and screaming. Matt, spot. Kick is away. He's got the distance. It is good. Good. And the good. Giants are going to Tampa Bay. It's over for the three peats. It's over. At Super Bowl 25 in Tampa, Big Blue would face the high-octane Buffalo Bills in their K-Gun offense. But the Giants coaching staff would have their own plan of attack. I remember Ron Earhart come over and sit down next to me. He said, we're going to run you. I, I need you to, to give me uh, all you got. We're going to just wear them down. So let's just go ram the ball up there, giggy, you know. And that's what our plan was. Whenever you see highlights of Super Bowl 25, they got you in slow-mo and you're <laughs> delivering the uppercut. Uh, where'd that come from? You know, I, I'm trying to figure out how can I make you think about how to hit me. All game long, Kessel and I kept running to each other, and when I would collide with it, I would hear him go, oh, oh. So I'm like, okay, okay. So I figured if I could intimidate him thinking that I was going to really try to tear his head off, that he would think about how to tackle me. And look at Otis Anderson throw the uppercut. 
He looked like Muhammad Ali winding up, hopped in with that stiff arm. And it kind of worked. And I did get a good shot on him too. That was really good. How important though was it to finish that drive with a touchdown? We knew we needed to. We knew that after what we did clockwise, we needed to make sure that we got a touchdown. Josh on the one and a half yard line. OJ touchdown! What a player he has been for the Giants. All right, so you know Buffalo and Thurman Thomas is unbelievable. In unbelievable. The game. Yes. I mean. He could have won the MVP easily. No doubt. You know, Everson Walls makes a big tackle, forces the long field goal. Now, you said in San Francisco, as bars lining up to kick, hey, it's my destiny. We're going to the Super Bowl. Um, did you feel as confident that Norwood would miss? I did. I really did, because I knew it was my destiny. I just knew that I didn't come this far for it to get in like this. Oh boy, hearts beat faster in Buffalo. High drama here in the Super Bowl. Here comes number 11, Scott Norwood. Incredible. What a fine game. What an absolutely fine game. The Super Bowl will ride on the right foot of Norwood. Snap, spot, in the air. It's got the distance, it is. And then I heard guy jump and say, he missed, he missed. That's when all of us ran on the field, and it was just total joy. Giants have won. Super Bowl 25. Now Otis Anderson will end up his career. Yes, the most valuable player. It was a perfect ending when they told me that I was the most valuable player. You couldn't have scripted better than that. My career had, had turned around, and everything that I wished for, everything that I, I thought I could have done in, in football. It all came together. It's part of history now. OJ would retire from the Giants at the end of the 1992 season. The two-time Pro Bowler is one of only 31 running backs to have surpassed over 10,000 career rushing yards. And he ranks 30th on the NFL's all-time rushing list with 10,273 yards. He is still, to this day, the Cardinals' all-time leading rusher as well. But OJ is a Giant forever and he'll never forget the words of Big Blue's beloved patriarch, Wellington Mara. Once a giant, always a giant. It, it means that you're never out of the family, forever. Otis Anderson. Bleed blue through and through. You cut any of us right now, you ain't getting red, you're getting blue. Blue run through all our bodies.